Hi everyone. So, uh, you know, after my dad died, I got all of these old negatives and photo prints uh, that no one had done anything with in a very, very long time. And so over the, the, the past number of years, I've scanned them off and on. And, and this is one that I scanned a little while ago. And I thought, hey, you know what? This would be a good, uh, a good photo to do a tutorial video on how to take an old picture and do some color correction so that it looks like it was supposed to. Now this was uh, an old 126 image. Now you can tell it's a 126 image because it's got a single registration mark up here and it's also a square format. Uh, it's also 35 millimeter film size but you can't really tell that from the scan. And uh, it's Kodak safety film so you can tell it's pretty old. I happen to know this photo was taken in 1971 I believe. Uh, 72 maybe, but I'm pretty sure 71. So we have this photo of my dad wearing a, a fur coat or some kind of coat. I think it was suede. He had it for a few years after I was born. I think it was suede. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rotate this thing 90 degrees clockwise to at least get it back to where it's level and not giving me and you a headache anymore. Now this is Adobe Photoshop CS4 that I'm doing this in, but everything I'm going to show you can be done in many versions of Adobe Photoshop, as well as many other software programs, though the functions will be in different places and have different names. Uh, now I happen to recognize this room. It was uh, one of my grandparents. It was in my grandparents' living room, and I rec also know that it's backwards, uh, but you can also tell because Kodak Safety Films backwards. So we're going to go back into image rotation and we're going to flip the canvas horizontal. That's what that image is supposed to look like. Now everything is happy again. And hey, interesting fact, that samovar right there is the only thing from this room that anyone in my family still owns. It's kind of sad. At any rate, next thing we want to do is we want to crop this image because we're going to correct the color balance in a minute or two, but we need to crop it beforehand so that the Kodak safety film and the white border don't influence the way that the color balancing algorithms uh, work on the, the actual image. So I've created a crop, uh, a crop space right here. Now there are two ways, two very easy ways to do this. The easiest of which is to take the anchor point, which was in the middle, put it up here at the corner, modify that a little bit so that, that corner is actually at the corner of the image and now everything that we do is going to rotate from that corner. And we can modify the crop space based on the new alignment. I didn't get it quite perfectly so I'm going to lose a little bit on the top and the side but really who cares. Crop. Now we have a level image and we've gotten rid of all of those pesky borders and everything like that that were in the way so that we can now focus just on getting these colors to pop. Now you can see there's an overall blue cast to this and a big part of that's because this is Kodak safety film and not something else of the time such as uh, Kodacolor X. I have a bunch of Kodacolor X film that my parents shot with and it hasn't changed at all. It's the only old film that they, that they used uh, that the colors are still as true today as they were uh, when they were taken and they don't require they require almost no processing. Um, Kodacolor also, or Kodachrome rather, uh, has, has some abilities like that but not as good as, as what I've seen. any rate, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to adjust some of the color balance in this to try and make it look like it was supposed to. So first thing I'm going to do is go into levels. No. Take that back. First thing I'm going to do is go into color balance. I'm going to try and get some of this blue out. Placing it a little bit with yellow kind of still looks foggy but you can see that the, the suede coat here, that the brown is starting to come back and the walls are getting back to their white coloration. That's a little bit too much. Oh, there we go. That carpet was very red, so it would be nice to make it pop a little bit. 
and we want to add a little bit of red back in here but not that much so you can see basically what I'm doing is going off of my memory of what this living room looked like to adjust these sliders to correct the color a little bit that's better that looks better and as I go back and forth between highlights, midtones, and shadows, one of the nice things is that it remembers the previous slider adjustments and doesn't reset them. So I can go back and make, make tweaks again to, to it. That's getting much closer. This lamp was a dark burgundy color, and that's starting to come through. And if you are adjusting a photo that you've never seen the room of or don't know, have any real references to, one thing you can do is look at a common subject, such as this... Christmas plant. I forget the name of those. Uh, they have them all over the place at Christmas up here in America, even though they die in the cold. At any rate, um, nothing says Christmas like a plant flown in from South America. But, you know, these are a pretty common plant. Green leaves, red bracts. Uh, so, if you have a reference like that, then can start to get some more adjustment in. Oh, there we go. That's making a little bit more white in the highlights. Go back to the midtone. So basically, these sliders are one really good way of going from a, an old negative or an old print. This works for, for scanning an old photo print as well. To recovering as much of the color information as possible to make it look like the photo or the, the, the photo source has not degraded over time. Now, there's a couple other things going on in here. There's this yellow line, some kind of processing error. These ha this happens all the time, either as a processing error or uh, there was a, over time that part of the film has degraded. More likely it was a mistake when the chemicals were being added. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the healing brush and I'm going to use the healing brush tool because this takes a source and clones that source. Now before I get too far, I want to clear up some of these white dots in here. More than I actually probably need to up here, but I want to make sure that none of them get transferred to this yellow streak as I cover it. I'm going to go a little bit at a time. And this is a good habit to do a uh, to, to develop if you have a slower computer, which I used to, and it my old computer could not handle large um, large areas all at once. So I would have to go in smaller segments in order to get the, uh, the computer to process what was the, the changes that were being made. Now this is a little bit difficult here because we have this shape that does not immediately appear to be repeated elsewhere. But this is kind of close. So what we'll do it's not exactly the same color, but I'm hoping Photoshop will forgive me a little bit. Don't like the way that looks. So what I'm doing, trying to do for this is find some other shape that kind of mirrors it. Hey, that worked. And there we go. Touch it up a little bit. That's not going to be perfect. But I took another shape that kind of mirrors it, and Photoshop figured out what I was trying to do and re repaired that clone. Now this is starting to get a little bit more tricky here. We got some hair. So I'm going to start with this highlighted portion here. I'm going to look for another portion that's highlighted. Ooh, that's, that's not good right there. Let's cover that up. It's better. Work on this part. There we go. And as you can see, I just moved right, so I kept the shadow as well. This hair here is at about the same angle as that hair. So that should work pretty close. We're actually going to, there we go. Fix that up a little. I'm going to undo those last two steps because I don't like the way that turned out. What we're going to do though, the, the goal here is to get those to blend a little bit, to re, because in, fixing the part, we had to actually destroy this part of the part, so we rebuilt it a little bit. And it's close enough that it looks the same. Again, 
looking for a similar shape and color to up here. I think that works close enough. Or closely enough. I should know that stuff. Now this ear is going to be a little bit tricky. I'm going to make the diameter a little bit smaller for this. I'm going to make it tw uh, 12. 12 should be good. As you can see, I just grabbed some ear skin from down there and repeated. And when you can see it's a little bit blurry, and that can happen sometimes when you clone. But when we're done, we're going to zoom way out in this and uh, again, and it's not even going to be noticeable. Oops, holding control and scrolling with the, with the trackball or mouse moves you to the left and right. Nice straight line. These are very easy to do. Oops. Wasn't really paying attention to where the end of the picture frame was. So let's try that again. Nice straight line, very easy to do. Same thing over here, straight line. Same thing on this side. Now that we've rebuilt that area, we can fix that. Oop. Gotta do a little bit more. There we go. That's pretty close. It's not perfect, I'll admit. That's a little bit closer to perfect. But again, when we zoom out on this and view it at 100%, that's going to be unnoticeable. So just grabbing a little bit of red from inside the lamp. Fix a couple more of these spots here. It's a weird spot. Don't like that. So we'll fix it. And I could go through and spend probably the better part of an hour fixing the rest of these spots, but I'm not going to. I've gotten the major stuff. So zooming out, you can kind of faintly see where the yellow line was because it's not a completely perfect blend. But if you hadn't known it was there, I submit you probably wouldn't know that it ever had been at this point. So there we go. We've taken that original negative which was rotated backwards, had a severe blue cast, and that yellow line, and we've oriented it correctly, cropped it to shape, and cleaned up a lot of the picture. Now I'm done, I'm going to finish up this recording, I'm going to go back and finish up cleaning up some of these specs on this, this picture to make it look nice and good like, like it should being a family photo. But I'll tell you what, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section. I'm pretty good about responding fairly quickly. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you want to, and you'll be notified when I come out with more uh, photography tutorial and how-to videos, which is pretty frequently. I, I try to do this often. And also, give me a thumbs up uh, and like this video if, um, if it was helpful and useful. That lets me know the more my videos that get a lot of likes are the ones that I know the people are benefiting from, and those are the ones that I try to do more of. Uh, so thank you very much, and uh, if you have any suggestions about other ways to do this, because there are other ways to do this in Photoshop, feel free to post a uh, response video or an, a comment about other tools that can be used to do the same thing.